Uh, hi, uh, my name is Dr. Richard Venditti. Um, I'm going to be hosting you on a tour today of a recycling facility. Um, I'm here with Ryan Long, and um, we're here at a Sunoco uh, recycling facility in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, Ryan, can you tell us a little bit about what this facility does? Yes, um, this is a materials recovery facility. Um, an acronym that we use is a MRF. Uh, this facility brings in residential recycling, which is um, a, what we call a single stream. It's a combination of your cardboard, uh, mixed papers, newsprint, uh, aluminum cans, tin cans, glass, uh, really a combination of all the things you would put in your bin on the curb. Um, the facility actually processes through that, sorts those equipments into their individual units and uh, bales it and then ships it back out to end users. Uh, it also brings in commercial uh, type recyclables, which is usually recyclables that don't require any sorting. This is generally your cardboard or your sorted office papers, things like that. So um, it's a very representative example of a MRF that you would see all over the United States and it's um, really our flagship plant in Sunoco Recycling. Okay, let's go. We're at the beginning of the process right now. Um, Ryan, can you tell us um, uh, where the materials come from and how they're delivered to the facility? Uh, yes, um, most of the material you're going to see here, the single stream is coming from your local cities and counties. Um, we work with those to collect this on the curbside. Um, usually either a waste hauler or possibly the city's doing the collection. They'll bring it to us uh, via compactor trucks or um, what we call walking floor trailers. And it's dumped on the ground here and we use our large front end loader to begin it to feed to our conveyor system. And what kind of materials do you get? Um, basically everything you see here, it's just a combination of all the common recyclables that you would have in your household, uh, all your plastics, uh, your aluminum cans, your tin cans, your glass, uh, and basically all the papers you, you would normally run into, office paper, newsprint, cardboard, um, and the like. Okay. okay, let's see how the process works. Okay, Ryan, after the recycles have come into the piles, what's the next step? Um, the front end loader will feed it onto our conveying system. We have a metering drum which will basically control the amount of material fed onto our conveying mm -hmm. system. And the conveying system will then bring it on up to our first uh, pre-sort station where we uh, remove cardboard and large rigid plastics. Go. Right, Ryan, what's happening on this first conveyor? Um, this is our pre-sort line. We do a manual uh, sorting of large plastics and basically uh, uh, large sheets of cardboard and boxes. And those kinds of things probably plug up some of the other operations. That's later right, on. that's right. You gotta get after your larger things first so that you can get to your smaller things later. So it's important to get out the large things before we head to our disc screen because again they can cause a problem there. All right, Ryan, can you tell me after the cardboard and the rigid plastic is removed, what comes next? Well, the next step is our first fiber screen. And the way the fiber screen works, we have rubber discs here, and they're actually moving the, moving the paper and other materials up, basically up the, up the hill here. And with gravity, the heavier things are going to stay back and eventually fall through the disc. And the lighter materials of our paper, our newsprint, and our office paper will work its way over the screen to go down to a next, a next screen, very similar to this. It goes ahead and, and, again, tries to remove more of the bottles and we'll cover as much of the paper as we can. All right, Ryan, can you tell us what these two conveyors are used for? Yes, um, what we've got here is we've got fiber coming off our first fiber sort screen, and we got fiber coming off our second fiber sort screen. And uh, our ladies here are picking out a lot of the different contamination that still exists in there, a lot of your plastic bottles, plastic bags, uh, some big cardboard that might still be mixed in there. Really, it's a quality control thing. As we're trying to make our newsprint here, we want to eliminate as much of those contaminants as we can. All right, well, following our fiber line, uh, the materials you see here are really the rejects off that line. Um, these are our materials that are really the non-paper materials, our aluminum cans, our tin cans, our, all of our plastics, and our glass. And it'll move off this conveyor belt into our glass breaker where we're going to move the glass and then later, after the glass breaker, we'll start to work on the plastic and the metal. So after the glass breaker and the, we have your aluminum and your plastic bottles mainly, uh, they work their way to your optical sorter. Optical sorter is going to basically be working to identify PET, your number one bottles, your drink bottles and soda bottles. Um, any materials that are not accepted through that, that are rejected through the optical sorter, um, again, you'll have some PET in there, but a lot of HDP, your number two type things, your, your milk jugs and your, your Tide you know, detergent type bottles. 
uh, and orange juice bottles and aluminum and any tin cans, they'll be processed forward and start going through our next series of processes, which will include a magnet, which is there to collect the tin and other metals, um, an eddy current, which is a reverse polarity a device that kicks out aluminum cans, and then we use actually some manual sorting to actually help pick through the, the remaining plastics, the, the PET, the HDPE, and then you know picking out the metals that may have still been in those plastic streams. Good. All right, what do we have here? Uh, we're actually at our mixed glass pile, so after the glass is broken in the process, it actually is, uh, is blown out to this area, and it doesn't look like glass. Um, when you get up close, you actually see it by weight, it's actually very, very high percentage glass. Um, Ryan, uh, what percentage of the incoming material is glass? Um, in this facility and what we receive, about 25% of it by weight is glass. Now, as you can see, the big pile doesn't look like a lot of glass because the, uh, the paper and stuff sh you know, shows through a lot more, but when you get into actually looking at it and you really start talking about it in terms of the weight of the materials, the, uh, the true density of it is, is the glass. So and that's where the weight comes in. It's, you, you see that you see that quite a bit, and you start really pushing through and taking out some of the lighter weight materials, you see that the glass really is the primary composition of this stream. But all the other contaminants that are really difficult for us to get out in, in our sorting facility, this is actually sent to a glass sorting facility where they go to the next few steps to sort it by color and get out all this extra trash materials that they, you know, should not be mixed in with the glass. All right, so after you've separated all the different materials into individual components, how do you prepare those materials to be shipped to end users? So each of the materials is segregated at this point. Um, they're in their own bunkers or piles. Um, they're fed on conveyors to what we call our balers. Um, we have two balers here, but uh, primarily we've got one that will run most of the materials from the residential side. So the materials are bailed up, densified, um, and then stored in our warehouse, and trucks will show up for each of the different materials. And, there can be 10, 12 different types of materials that we're sending out at this point from all the segregation we've done between the papers and the plastics and the metals and, uh, and the glass. So um, that's, that's mainly how it all leaves. The glass does not be bailed, it's not bailed. It's actually shipped out loose, um, but the rest of the material is shipped out either bailed and then any residue we might have, which would be non-recyclable materials, um, those are also shipped out loose or bailed depending on the nature of the materials. Okay, so the uh, material that you can't recover, where does that go? Uh, generally, if you can't recover it um, and it can't be burned for fuel, um, it will actually wind up back in the landfill. So generally, we'll lose about 10% of the process is lost in landfill. So that's for that's just people recycling the wrong things. Okay. Now um, you said uh, quite a few times about bales. How come everything isn't just uh, loosely uh, packed into trucks and then? Uh transport around. What's so important it, about bales? It's all about the weight on the truck. You, you've mm -hmm. got to maximize your freight cost and or minimize your freight cost by maximizing your weight. So when you're shipping a lot of the materials either export or to or to domestic plants to be sorted, the more material you can get on it, the less gas you've got to, to uh, put into it to transport it. So it really comes back down to your freight cost and transportation cost. Mm -hmm. Okay, hey Ryan, tell us how the baler works. Okay, um, so this is a uh, this is a two ram baler. Um, it's got a, as the material falls into the chamber, it has a hydraulic cylinder on the back with pump hydraulic fluid into it, causes the cylinder to come forward, it compresses it in this direction. Um, as it gets to a, a tight enough pressure, it starts to feel the back pressure on it, it, it through a pressure gauge. Uh, when it gets to the right set point, we have another ramp that comes this way and forces the material back out. And then we have a wire tie that wraps wire around it to hold it together. So as you can see, all the material is oriented in this direction because that's where the pressing happens. And then when you push out and you strap the wire around it, you come up with the shape of your bale. And the, the, the weight of the bale will vary based on the material that you have. So if you have a good cardboard bale, you might be looking at 2,000 pounds of bale. Um, some of these plastic bales, you know, they can, they can range widely. I'm not going to even make a guess because the material will, will greatly influence the weight. How much lighter? Uh, Ryan, can you tell us about the bales before they're shipped out? Yes, uh, so we have our storage here. We've got our, our mixed papers and our newspaper and our cardboard and our plastic. So uh, what we do here is it's close to our loading docks. They're going to be loaded onto trucks for customers. Now, when we load trucks, it's always one commodity per truck. So if someone orders cardboard, they're ordering all cardboard. We don't mix the different papers together or the plastic with the paper. Uh, some of the materials you see will go export. They'll be loaded containers and sent to supports to be shipped to China and India. Some of the materials you see will be sent here domestically to be recovered and you know recycled in new products here in the United States. 
We generally carry about a two-day inventory, uh, no, really no more than that, just due to space and the amount of material coming through the plant. So it's constantly a process of bringing it in and shipping it out. Uh, Ryan, this is a really fascinating process. Um, uh, I think you're also doing a lot of good things for the environment. So we really appreciate you hosting us. Well, thank you for coming. Um, Snook Recycling is proud to participate in this process, and I'd like to thank the Raleigh plant for offering up their time for this tour. For all you students out there, I hope you found this tour to be interesting and informative.